Today we're looking at section 1, marginal functions and difference quotients out of chapter 3, rates of change and derivatives of business calculus with Excel. Given a function f of x, we define the marginal function mf of x plus 1 to be f of x plus 1 minus f of x. It's the amount that f increases if we increase x by 1. Marginal functions show up in business and we ask if we increase the capacity, will it make things better or worse? The easy examples to think about, I think about buying bread or donuts close to closing time at a store, that they frequently will give a discount just as they're about to close because they know they need to throw them out. And so any revenue becomes profit and there is it's only sunk cost and so there's no additional cost. The other place it shows up is in airline pricing where the tickets that you get with lots of restrictions are relatively cheap and the last minute tickets are expensive because the last minute business travelers are who pays for the plane and it costs about the same amount to fly the plane whether there's 10 passengers or 100 passengers on it. So what we'd like to do is produce tables that will give marginal functions. We'll do it in three versions. First of all, increasing the value of x by 1 with one column for f of x. Then the values of x are unconstrained, and we look at columns for f of x and f of x plus 1. And then we do a more complicated setup with columns for x, x plus 1, and f of x, and f of x plus 1, because this is an, a version that has fewer errors with fewer formulas, and the steps are easier to follow. We often will want f and marginal f on the same graph so we see how they connect to each other. And we then want to look at an example where we need to find the formulas with trend lines for x. As is my normal practice, I'll follow the structure of the text but not do the same examples. There are videos of the text examples attached to the text. So the first thing I want to look at is finding marginal functions, and as I said, I'm going to try it three ways. The first way is I have a nice function, profit minus q squared minus quantity q squared minus 20q plus 18, and I plug it in. I can do quick fill to go down for an extent, so I'm going to go down about 20 spaces. I then look at the marginal profit, the marginal profit at any point will be the next profit minus the profit we had. And that should have been a minus sign there, minus the profit that we had. That gives me the marginal profit. And I look at it and I can see that profit is increasing up until this point where then the marginal profit is becomes negative and that's when the profit starts decreasing, that increasing quantity decreases the profit. I'd like to do a scatter plot, so I'm going to insert a scatter plot. I'm going to do a marked scatter plot. Notice at the end the marginal profit isn't very reliable. I'm going to get rid of that one. Actually, I want to keep the marginal profit for the I want to keep the profit for the last one, but the marginal profit had something we didn't understand. Given the two different sizes, I'm going to look at this and say, okay, actually that's fine. This gives me marginal profit. The only problem with this is if I'm looking at a larger scale, so I want to go from zero to a thousand, if I want marginal profit at various places, I need to fill in every row. And so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to insert a column. And my column will be profit of q plus 1. And if I look back at my formulas, if I had a formula for profit of q, the formula for profit of q plus 1 ought to look about the same except a3 minus 1 every time I had an A3, parenthesis, A3, I'm sorry, A3 plus 1 every time I had an A3,
and then my marginal profit now is going to be equal to the profit of Q plus 1 minus the profit at Q. I can copy down on this. One of the advantages, notice my curves have stayed the same, my values have stayed the same, but one of the advantages of doing this is if I wanted to go up by twos or tens or twenties, I can do that on this with this and not have to fill in everything in between. At this point, my profit is such a much bigger number than my marginal profit. I'm going to want to go and change format the data series and put the marginal profit on a different axis. Then I can see something's interesting happening around this point because the marginal profit is zero. That happens at the maximum for the profit. So this is a better way to do it in that I don't have to be fill in every step and count by ones, which may not be very efficient if I'm, say, going every hundred. But there's another thing we want to do. I'm going to look at it. I'm going to insert columns. Typing out this function is a place that I find students often make mistakes. They lose parentheses, they put a minus, they do something, and get the wrong value here. So the technique I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a column and make my column q plus 1. And if, my po if that's q plus 1, that's a simple formula, a3 plus 1. I quick fill down. And when I quick fill down, that will give me my q plus 1s. Now, I'd like this to be profit of q plus 1. The first time I did it, I replaced the a3 by a3 plus 1. But now if I'm doing quick fill, the a3s are going to turn into b3s, which is what I needed for q plus 1. And so this gives me, again, the same thing. But this setup lets me do it with only typing the function once and doing quick fill everywhere else it's a way I think that causes fewer mistakes. If I want to look at the full consideration, I'm going to start with my cost and my demand price. And so I'll do zero and we'll go up by fives. I'm going to have my cost, which equals 20 plus five times my quantity, my demand price is equal to 40 minus my demand price, I mean minus my quantity, my revenue is equal to the quantity times the demand price, and the profit is equal to the revenue minus the cost. This is fairly straightforward to set up. I'm looking at it. I have my, well, I look at it. I'd like to now say I want marginal profit, which means I'm going to need marginal cost and marginal demand. I'm going to insert columns, every other column. And so I'd like this to be Q plus 1 cost of q plus 1, demand of q plus 1, profit of q plus 1. And then I'm going to have marginal cost of q plus 1, marginal revenue of q plus 1, and 
marginal profit. Spell profit correctly. So Q plus 1 is simply equal to Q plus 1. Cost of Q plus 1 is going to be cost of Q moved over to Q plus 1. I can drag down. Demand of Q plus 1 I get from the demand of Q. Revenue of Q plus 1 Uh, this should be revenue of Q plus 1. And this should be profit of Q plus 1. I'm arranging things in order. Revenue of Q plus 1. Again, I can drag down to fill these in. And then for my marginal cost, Marginal cost is going to be cost of Q plus 1 minus cost of Q. Marginal revenue of Q plus 1 is going to be revenue of Q plus 1 minus revenue of Q. And marginal profit of Q plus 1 is going to be profit of Q plus 1 minus profit of Q. And so in each case I got the extra column without typing the formulas by my arrangements here. Notice that the marginal cost is a fixed number for a linear function. The slope always stays the same. The marginal revenue is changing because this is quadratic. And the marginal profit also changes because it's also quadratic. The last examples to look at were ones where I want to find predicted profit and marginal profit. So I first of all I'm going to set it up to find my formulas. I want to insert a scatter plot. I take my scatter plot. I want to have a trend line added in. I'm going to add in the trend line. I want a polynomial of degree 2. I'd like to display the equation. I'm going to look at the equation, make it 12 points so I can read it, use this to figure out what the marginal profit, the pro projected profit is. I'm going to copy, paste in. x squared becomes times a2 squared, and x is times a2. Again, before I do marginal profit, I'd like to have predicted profit of Q plus 1 and not have to do 400 rows in order to get it. So I'm going to take it and say, besides the predicted profit, I'd like to insert and get predicted profit Q plus 1. Well, in order to know the predicted profit of Q plus 1, I'm going to want to, have a Q, want to have a column for Q plus 1. And so again, we take this, add 1 to Q. That gets me my Q plus 1 row. My predicted profits for Q are easily turned into predicted profits of Q plus 1. Notice my formulas went from formulas in A3 to formulas in B3, and my marginal profit is going to be my predicted profit of Q plus 1 minus my predicted profit of Q. And so this we can start with data, come up with a predicted formula, use the predicted formula to predict profit, and the predicted profit of Q plus 1. Again, I've arranged Q and Q plus 1 so that quick filling will give me the formulas. Thank you.